how can it be that you sometimes have a process with a pretty okay CPK, but a horrible PPK? Or when you do those SPC calculations, you get very tight control limits, tighter even than the data you used to make those same control limits. Hmm, something fishy is going on there, isn't it? Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel, where we talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. And we're going to dive into a little bit of statistics this time, specifically that what you see in CPK, PPK, CMK, and statistical process control. So capability studies, process control studies. And both of them, they have to do with standard deviation and then how things are calculated and what we are looking at. Now, you might be aware that when we are talking CPK and PPK, there is a third little brother, which is the CMK. So we've got machine capability, and then we have process capability and process performance. Machine capability is the shortest term. Process capability is sort of midterm. And then process performance is long term capability of our process. But what, what does that mean? Right? So when you are checking for machine capability, you are taking 30 consecutive samples and only having that. And you try not to change the machine. You try not to change material batches operator. So you eliminate as many possible sources of variation. And what you then get is with everything being equal as much as possible, how much variation is the machine giving me? Okay, okay, well, logical that that is, is probably better than the, when we check over a day, something like that, right? So the, the process capability in, in general, we removed all kinds of sources of variation. Remove the operator and the, well, we didn't remove the operator, but we removed the variation of that material. Now, the thing is with CPK and PPK, what they're trying to do is have the difference between well, you know, what happens throughout the day to what happens throughout the year, right? CPK takes into account most of the variations that we have in a regular day or week. Changes of shift, changes of material batch, stuff like that. But it is relatively short term. PPK just checks the whole process. And if we have a data set or let's say a process that is behaving like this. So we see that there is variation. And then suddenly we see that sort of the whole process shifts, right? To almost the same level of variation, but at a different point. And then it shifts again, again, roughly the same level of variation. Now, the thing is, th this is sort of probably not even seasonality, that would be slightly more uh, smooth, probably. Quite likely we're seeing something like a serious change in material batch or something like that. It depends a bit on your time skills. These might be shifts. Maybe you have a free shift pattern and all of your shifts just happen to have a different way of setting the machine. It depends on the data. But what you will see, if you now do CPK and PPK calculations on them, is that your CPK? Well, let's see that. Well, that, that fits in there more than twice. Hmm. Also, and I did this a bit on purpose. These two, they balance out the average. The, the average is, is indeed on the average nicely between our tolerances. So this will have a CPK that's nice. something like that, 2.5 or so. Now, when we look at the PPK, and I'll check this whole thing, and the PPK, I mean, I haven't calculated what uh, is happening here. The PPK, basically, it sort of makes that, that whole thing come into it and then extrapolates the standard deviation from what it sees. Probably it'll be something like this. So that is, oh, wow. It's about one. Which is, well, if not horrible, at least low, right? Big difference. You see the same, and we'll get into the explanation of how the formulas work in a bit, but you see the same when you are doing SPC. So 
I've had a couple of uh, training coaching groups uh, that were setting up S SPC. They saw something similar to this. And what did the SPC systems or the, the rules teach us? It was that we were getting limits that were, well, honestly, quite narrow. We're getting limits like this. So you immediately see a big part here of the setup data that we, this was not determined based on that and then we'll let the process run. No, this was all, all this data was used to set up the rules. So even the rules we used to set up everything, the data, they don't fit within their own rules. Uh, strange. That is also because of this same short-term, long-term standard deviation. You see, what we do is we estimate the standard deviation. Now, when we put this into a PPK type of calculation, we calculate the standard deviation of all of the data that we have. And it will take this mean and it will go and calculate all of those differences and square them up and take the, the, the square root of it, but it'll, it'll come with a standard deviation. It's based on everything. But both the CPK and how we work with SPC, they use ranges to estimate the standard deviation. So they use a range. Now, what do we mean with that? If you look at the way that we calculate the CPK, we want to have subgroups. And what does a subgroup mean? That means that every point here on the graph was actually a number of measurements. So when you want to calculate CPK, that is really the standard way to do it. So each of these points was the average of a small group. And what the CPK will do is it will say, oh wait, based on these group sizes, I am going to estimate the short-term standard deviation. And we're not going to take into account, there was a huge gap over here and all of these are much lower. No, the CPK simply says, you know, it has about this in free standard deviations, but about this standard deviation, so this is then the six standard deviations that we're going to use in our calculations. SPC does the same. Right? In SPC, if you know the system a bit, you know that you have subgrouping types of so the X bar and R chart, and then you have the individual and moving range chart. So when you don't have the subgrouping going on in SPC, you still do the same, but then you do it with the moving range. So instead of having a range from that point to that point, you use this difference and then again and again. And now I made these ranges pretty large, but what you see more often is something like here, right? That some of them are large, but many of them are also smaller because the data points, they get close to the center of your distribution. Right? You, you get more data from close to the mean than you get from far away from the mean. And so this is a pretty small one, big one. And your SPC will average all of this out and then multiply it by an estimator of the standard deviation. And that is also exactly what your CPK system does. So you take the, the range and you could do CPK with moving range as well. You use basically the same system. You get the moving range and you multiply or divide. It depends a little bit on which uh, of the coefficients you have, but you multiply it by a number that is an estimator of standard deviation based on range. And because the range is always very short term, it's always just either within a subgroup or between two measurement points, these ones, they don't really matter. Not when you have so much data. 
So that is how in the formulas you can get this result. It is what we are targeting at because with CPK, as I said, we are looking for the process capability. So we want to know if this process can actually really stay within the specifications. And it can, especially this shift here, if these are three shifts, it definitely can. But we are not running it as it should be because we have relatively large parts of time, slices of time, that we are way off center. We know we can operate this process centered. So if these are shifts, we'll have to do something with the first two shifts. Retrain, reset, whatever, right? Something needs to happen. If these are material batches, we need to dive into what is that material doing. But we have special causes of variation. And if you follow SPC, statistical process control, you know that special cause of variation exactly is what we're trying to attack. So in the idea of SPC is that you find what is just your, your normal, your common cause variation within the process and don't try to steer to correct for that. But you do want to see process drift and then react to it. So this estimating the standard deviation based on the range or the moving range, that is not a flaw. It is a feature. It is exactly why these tools are designed vastly. They need to be doing that. And this nice ratio of the CPK divided by the PPK, that also gives you an indicator of how much worse we are doing over time. Can we keep our process centered or not? Can we keep it at least at the same level? Or do we have some seasonality shift or maybe different operators doing different things? This is really useful information to have. So don't be alarmed if you see something like that happening. In fact, if you see a CPK that is over to be very happy because if you can reach that, you can also find the reasons why your process performance is not that good and correct it. I am very certain that if you can find these jumps and the, the reason behind the jump, you will find also a way to solve them. And the same goes also for if you see this happening when you're setting up your SPC, great. You have found a nice difference between common cause and special cause of variation. You know what to attack and you know how you can improve your overall process performance. So I hope that this <clears throat> sort of mess of, of numbers and lines did clarify things. And if it did, don't forget to hit that like button and give me some other problems that you are running into. This came also uh, from one of my teaching, coaching sessions, uh, but I get questions from you, from the people I work with. I love answering them because this is, these are things that many people struggle with, that many people see. So if you have one of those questions or any you know, suggestion for a video, don't forget to put that in the comments. For now, I wish you the best of luck running your statistics, your SPC, your CPKs, and as always, don't forget to also enjoy the continuous improvement journey.